This is the Mechanics 8, which is the next part of, of the refraction section. Now, I've just grouped it under Mechanics. I know it's refraction, waves, and so on. I've just put it as the first part of, of, of the work. We were looking at light waves going through from a less dense to a denser medium. In other words, from something light to something sticky. Right? Just think of it in those terms, right? And we said that as it goes through from something less dense to something denser, in other words, it's more work, it loses energy, so it drops down towards the normal. It kind of goes towards the normal, like that. Oppositely, obviously, if it's been plowing through this dense stuff, coming up, 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 and suddenly it suddenly gets into the air and it can run free, it gets its energy back and off it goes. Okay? So... Let's just examine some of the other little parts of this um, this section of the work, the uh, refraction of light. Let us look at, um, for example, an exceptionally clever fish called the archer fish. Some of you have seen Nat Geo or, 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 or those programs. You know it's a fish that lives in a river and it lives where there's vegetation that overhangs the rivers. And what it does is it lies under the water and then it spits water out onto a winged insect or a, or, or a bug, which then hits it and it falls into the water and then the fish can eat it. The fish is able to do that, even although there's a difference in the angle, because it's not where it should be if we were to do it. It's in a different position. So the fish is able to correct for the angle of refraction, which is a pretty, um, pretty cool sort of uh, idea. Let's, let's, ex let's have a look at a, a situation here where we say, all right, let's put the surface of the water over there like that. Let us put the fish sitting down here, okay, under the water like that. Now we take the ray from the fish. So let us take the ray going up to the water surface like that. We know that what happens is when it gets to the surface, this is denser than air, isn't it? So it's going to go away from the normal. So this is going to be theta i. This is going to be ni for Snell's law because this is the incident. This is the ray coming in to the surface. This is the point that we are looking at is when it does the bend. This is then going to be theta r. This is going to be the refracting side. Okay. So anyway, we know that the refracting is less than that, so it's going to move away from the normal. Okay. Well, if we are standing at the top here, okay, if we are, if we've got our eye up here and we're looking, where do we think the fish is? Well, quite simple. We just go backwards and we see the fish up there. So we don't see the fish in the real position where it is. We think the fish is up here. Meanwhile, the fish is down there. So this is the apparent position of the fish over here. Because we are not trained to count at the angle of refraction. It's not in us to do. Why? Well, because we don't live in the water. So we don't, uh, we don't need to. The archer fish, however, does. So he's able to counter for that and get his, uh, his prey that's sitting on a branch. So this element here brings us to the, the, the issue of the car keys in a, in a pool or something. Let's, uh, let's have a look at what happens um, in that situation, shall we? Let's see what happens now. Let's take our, um, our water, okay? Our swimming pool, for argument's sake. Right? There, like that. And I don't know, let's call it two meters deep, shall we? And let's say we've got a person standing on top here on the paving over there, and they're looking down into the water, and let's say something is at the bottom of the pool. Right? Let us now take this something at the bottom of the pool over here. 
right and there's this uh, thingy so the light ray comes up like this okay and it's going from here and it gets bent into the eye of the person like that so that's how they see it this is my incident ray yes theta i n i this is the ray i'm coming into the surface i get bent away from the normal because it's less dense but where do i see the car keys being i see the car keys being down here don't i or whatever it is that's essentially what i'm seeing aren't i i'm i'm not seeing the 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 um them there because it's being refracted away from the normal so that's what i'm seeing now we can do the calculations and we'll do an example of this in in a few secs where we've got one like this we'll put in and we'll see they'll obviously they will tell us how high the person is here for example let us say 1.75 meters above there is the eye and we're going to work this out it's basically it's going to be going to using trig but these kinds of problems are where this becomes actually useful becomes interesting because we need to know where that is relative to that because a lot of the things we do involve interfaces between water and and ourselves the other thing of course is there's also glass there's um, rays of light going through glass same kind of thing applies another kind of uh, a problem that is uh, that is very often featured is this one where they say that you've got let us say we've got air here and we've got glass here right and we take a ray of light coming in over here all right now air is less dense than glass so as we go into it we're going to slow down so which means that we're going to bend that way all right then they tell you here's another surface i don't know let's say it goes from there to um let's say to a diamond right right and the end of this let's say n here is one the end of the glass was let's just have a look again the end of the glass was 1.52 and the end of the diamond was going to be 2.42 so once again now remember here we are the incident ray theta i theta r right and this is the but now it becomes the incident ray for the next surface so this becomes theta i and it's going from here this number is small this is more dense it's thicker so what's going to happen it's going to come to the normal again so we can work out these angles as long as we know one of them we can work out the rest now let us say it goes out to air now it goes to n is equal to one so it kicks out like that okay can you see what we've done just as a matter of interest is we've deviated the light's path through all this that same ray of light if this whole system hadn't been there of the the glass the diamond and back to the air the ray of light would have carried on straight but by doing this we've actually changed its path as it's gone through right so what do we have to remember about this the key to remembering here is we start off in the incident medium and we deflect towards the normal every time we go to something higher when we go out of it we go to a lower one which means we can pick up our energy again so instead of being down we pick it up and we we can go with it right so let's uh, let's let's look for an example of 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 this right oh no before we do that let's um let's have a look at a very important um, concept here let us um look at this right we have got a ray of light coming up here right it's coming let us say from n equals 1.35 to an n of something of one so we're coming from dense to less dense so we're no longer 
having to work so hard so we're going to pick up our energy and run away like that theta i theta r n i n r okay now let's just look at what happens if we start moving this angle around a bit right it's going to do that okay and similarly okay can you see that at some point it's going to go down there like that isn't it okay it's actually going to go along skimming along the surface like a stone along water so when we get to this point can you see in each one of these this is theta i right this is the incident ray now because we're riding this ray to the surface at some point i'm going to be bent until this runs along the surface right what happens if i go beyond that point well this is what happens we say right we are now here right and all of a sudden you go from and they are equal this is called total internal reflection total internal reflection that's what's happened at that point over here everything was fine in case in case a in case b and in case c that was fine this point here what happened it suddenly went too far and it totally reflected internally in other words it didn't refract it anymore it reflected it now this principle is very useful because this is what we use in 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 some optic fiber cameras and things like that where we can go in with very small cameras into the human body and we can actually take videos we can have a look at what's going on inside you know it's a non-invasive process you don't need surgery for it they can use cameras the gastroscopy colonoscopies and i think that's what they're called where they actually go and examine the insides of the body um i i would imagine they even put them up blood vessels um to place stents and things like that they've got a camera the doctor can see what is actually happening inside you Right. So, this point here, I think you'd agree with me that at that point there, this is critical. It's some kind of critical point, isn't it? Well, what, what critical point is it? It's that point where the angle of incidence here, this theta i, is at the critical point. Where if it goes any slightly further, it doesn't refract anymore it reflects back into the um, into the medium okay now wh why why would we want to use this well obviously if we've got a a, 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 um, a tube let's say we've got a, a tube that looks like this just get back to my black okay and we've got this tube that can bend all right can as it goes into the I don't know why it was doing that all of a sudden. That's quite odd. Um, it's into the body. So what we're looking at is we're looking at light coming in here. Now as it hits these things, it bends internally all the way up here. So this image that we're seeing down there, okay, can't, it can't go out. So it gets bounced up and down the cable, the optic fiber cable in this case, until we actually see it over here so we are looking over here with our eye at something that's happening down inside it say a stomach or something like that right that is gone and this principle of total internal reflection operates on that basis that's what it's doing it's allowing us to see inside by virtue of the fact that the image that we see here whatever we're seeing there is brought out up there we don't lose it, the image as it moves up the cable okay let's do an example of um, of, of, of some of these um, some of these things right um, let's take this okay. 
Okay. Um, okay. All right. Let's take the, um, uh, let's invent one. Let's take the swimming pool problem, shall we? And let's go, say, right, I'll just draw it here. Okay. Like that. And we say that the N of this stuff is one point. Let's use water, which is one point um, three three. And once again, two meters deep. And a person at the top here, standing looking down there. And let's say that person, I ah, just round it off to 1.8 meters tall, like that. And we see this here. Okay. And this is the object we're looking at. Okay. And it is bent like that. And this is theta r. This is theta i. Okay. Now, let's see what we can do. Well, we can say that. Oh, wait a bit. Let's put this uh, down over here. Okay. There we go. Right. That is where we think they are. Okay. That is where we expect them to be. But they're not. Okay. So, I don't know. Let us say, for example, that um, let's say we measure this angle here. And this angle here is, I don't know, let's, for want of a better, let's call it 45 degrees and see what happens, shall we? So at 45 degrees, it means that this is going to be 45 degrees over there, which means what? Which means, now what do we do? We say, right, okay, we use Snell's law and we say, sine theta i times n i is equal to n r sine theta r. Well, let's have a look, shall we? Okay, in this case, we're looking for I because the rays coming from that object to our eyes. The rays don't come out of our eyes. We don't have heat rays. We're not Superman. Okay, so we say, right, sine theta I N I. So let's put in what we know. Sine theta I, we don't know. N I, we know it's this medium here is 1.33 is equal to N R. Uh, is 1 times sine, okay, of 45 degrees. Therefore, sine of theta i is going to be sine of 45. Let's just take it. Um, sine 45 is that. 0 0.7071 divided by 1.33. So theta i is going to be the arc sine of that, isn't it? It's going to be arc sine of that number, by the way, divided by 1.33 is going to be equal to 0 0.531. 0 0.5317, call it that. So let's go shift sine 0.5317 is equal to 32 degrees. I've rounded it 32,1. So I've just rounded it to 32 degrees. So now we know this triangle here. We know that that is 32 degrees, don't we? Okay. So what can we work out now? Okay. We can say, well, if we know that's 32 degrees, right? We then know. Let's say they say, oh, I don't know. Well, we'll think it up as we go. Now we know that is 32 degrees. We can take basic trig and we can say, well, if that's 32 degrees there, right, that is 2, right, there's our 90 degrees. So what do we do? We go up, up, opposite, uh, just, uh, we're going to look for the opposite side, my bad. Stand at the angle, that's opposite. This is hypotenuse, there's the adjacent. So when do we do? We look for the things that link what we want to know. So we're going to look opposite hypotenuse and, well, what are we looking for? We're looking for A, aren't we? Okay. A is 2 meters. We know that. Okay. Let's look if we can find out O. Of course we can. Opposite over adjacent is 10. 
So we'll go 10 of 32 degrees is opposite over adjacent. 2 meters. So the opposite here is going to be, let's say, um, 2 meters times 10, 32. Okay? 2 times 10, 30. 32 degrees is equal to 1 point, I'm rounding again, 1.25 meters. Okay? Right? So, we now know, right, that that length there is 1.25 meters. Okay? Now, let's say that they said, right, that that, the ray comes out at two meters away, let's say that was a square, therefore the keys are lying actually 3.25 meters away from that wall, aren't they? Okay. They look as if they're lying a lot further away. Because why? What do we see? We think that that's actually 45 degrees there, don't we? We're looking all the way down there. All right. So we are saying that the keys are way over there. They are, according to us, there and there, right? 45, 45. So we are saying that the keys are going to be 3.8 meters away. That's what we'd think, wouldn't we? we take that side, okay, and that side. And from our point of view, just only because I've used 45 degrees, 45 degrees there, 45 degrees there, must be 45, so that's... 1.8, 3.8. Can you see that? That's a 3.8 from there to there. So that's where we think they are. Meanwhile, they are actually only 3.25 away. So that's the error, so to speak, in the calculations that we have. But in essence, now, let's just move forward and have a look at the... Um, the um, total internal reflection. Let's see what's actually happening here, shall we? All right. We're going to get, if we look at a surface, we've got a ray coming in there. Remember, there's our normal. And let's say we are going from less, from dense, we're going to less dense. What happens when that happens? We speed up. And we say theta i and theta r. So we know from Snell's law that n, this is n i, this is n r. n i times the sine of theta i is equal to n r times sine theta r. So far, so good. Right? Now, as we move this, we know that this, this goes eventually it goes until it gets to this point skimming the surface at that point what is theta r over there theta r so we can say at critical point theta r is equal to 90 degrees isn't it because it's skimming the surface so we can see it moving along the plane of the surface well, let's put it in Okay, just get it back to black. So what have we got? We've got n i times sine theta i is equal to n r times sine of 90 degrees. So n i sine theta i is going to be equal to, now let's have a look, shall we? Um, sine 90 is 1. Oh. Well, here we got it. Sine theta i, in this case, for the critical angle, has got to be equal to n r over n of i. So, therefore, theta i is going to be arc sine n r over n i. So, now for any medium, we can find, let's say they say find the critical angle for um, going from diamond to air. Okay, so let's see. Critical angle diamond to 
air. Let's have a look. Well, what do we know? Theta i is going to be arc sine of um, the refractive medium is the air, isn't it? Because where are we going? We're going from diamond to air, right? So my R is going to be my air. And air is going to be 1. Diamond is 2.42, right? And let's see what the arc sign of that is. Um, all clear. Shift sign 1 divided by 2.52 and close my brackets. Okay. That was not clever. Arc sine of 1 divide 2.42. Now I'll close your brackets. There we go. Equals. Uh, and I've got my brackets wrong. Shift. Okay, let's just look at this. Right. 1 divided by 2.42 is going to be 0 0.4132. Shift sign 0.4132 equals. 24.4 degrees. 24.4 degrees. So that is the critical angle, right? Which means that if a light ray comes in at any angle to the surface of a diamond, let's just look at it. Okay. Right? Just so that we can lo logic it out. Remember the diamonds have got all the facets, the sides and, and whatever. That they're, they're cut right to enhance brilliance. It means that if we take a look, there's a surface, right? If the angle is bigger than 24 degrees, it's bounced back. Okay? So, in other words, if when they're cutting these, they can minimize that, it makes the brilliance of this diamond huge, doesn't it? Because we're bouncing the light inside it continuously. Okay? So, that is why diamond is such a, well, first of all, I think it's why it's got the brilliance, the term brilliance. But it's bouncing around inside there all the time because it's so low. Let's just last of all look at the critical angle, for example, between um, water. Okay, so we say it's going to be arc sine nr over ni. Correct? That's what we've got as our as our formula, right? Okay, so it's going to be arc sine. Now let's just have a look, okay? Let me just get rid of this, this um, my attempt at drawing a diamond over there, okay? And let's go back. Now let's have a look, hang on, which one is which? Where are we going? We are going from uh, water to air. So we've got water to air here, which means water is our refractive, air is our Okay, is our refractive side. Water is the incident because we are in the water going to air. So, um, refractive is 1 over. And what is the incident is water, we said? 1.33. It's 1.33. Let's have a look at this. Shift um, sign 1 divided by 1.33. And close my brackets there. Equals that. 48.75. Degrees. It's double a diamond, right? Okay, that's basically brought us to, to, to the end of the section on refractive index and refraction. Okay, the next part of this is going to be looking at the wave fronts themselves, where we're going to start looking at interference, we're going to start looking at um, interference patterns and things like that. Okay, 2D and 3D wave fronts. Okay. Um, talking about Hagen's principle and all of those things. From here, we're going to end up basically targeting to get to where we've got interference patterns. And that we're going to show that it does it with water and with light. That's going to be our next one.